Hello and good morning friends welcome to the CEC Edusit live lecture dear friends we are pleased to announce that uh, so far we have conducted numerous session under the series women and history so dear friends taking the series forward today we would be talking on women and cinema and for this discussion we have once again with us in our studios dr shruti vip dr shruti vip is assistant professor in department of history pgdav evening college university of delhi dr whip has immense experience and she has contributed a lot in the area of academics and we believe that her experience would definitely help us out in understanding the today's dot topic in detail so let's discuss on women and cinema and first of all let's welcome dr shrupti whip once again hello ma'am welcome to the satellite lecture like hello geetika uh, thanks again for giving me an opportunity to speak on such an interesting topic uh, so far uh, all the topics that we have covered uh, you must have found them uh, traditional topics and part of your curriculum but today's topic is going to be different and i'm sure uh, most of the listeners are going to like it uh, as all of us uh, do like seeing movies and we are fond of watching television cinema etc so therefore uh, it would be interesting to know as to how an entertainment medium can also be a subject of serious discussion and study and we can also derive meanings regarding gender gender identity and gender construction uh, through films cinema cinema history etc so i welcome all of you to this uh, session on women and cinema uh, i would like to begin with uh, the lecture with a series of uh, uh, quotations uh, which would introduce you to the idea of how any kind of representation is relevant representations enter our collective social understandings constituting our sense of ourselves the position we take up in the world and the possibilities we see for action in it uh, as has been said by lisa tickner so therefore any kind of representation whether it is literary representation oral repre pre representation visual representation uh, movies films uh, documentaries etc they all do have a great impact on our mentality and it is not only the visual appeal which is important but also the overall experience that you go through when you are watching something it definitely has an impact on our personality as well so therefore cinema can definitely be uh, understood as a visual discourse so therefore it is not a one time a momentary pleasure that we are deriving out of watching films but it's an entire discourse and it is conveyed in the public domain and in a public manner which organizes mediates and controls the discourses of gender and sexuality and this is what is going to be our focus of discussion today as to how through films how through this very important visual media uh, gender and sexuality is transmitted Uh, particularly in the context of indian cinema which has been a display of male power and it has succeeded in reestablishing the orthodox sexual gender relations thereby reaffirming orthodox understandings of men and women and their individual experiences uh, during their life cycle in the world however there are also some exceptions and again there is a reinforcement of norms even within the exceptional movies so for example while uh, it generally it has been seen that most of the movies fall in the genre of uh, uh, creating the story where the hero may have a range of desires but the heroine only desires the hero and what the hero desires 
However, there have been some exceptions. For example, the movie like Hum Dil De Chuke Sanam made by Sanjay Leela Bhansali 1999 revolves around the issue of female desire. And uh, at the onset, the film appears to be very radical because the entire story is woven around what the heroine wants and even the husband is accompanying her in order to accomplish what she wants for herself. But what is the end of the story? It is again uh, uh, no redefinition of gender relations, but again it is the idealized Indian Hindu marriage alliance and happiness which is triumphant and the heroine uh, considers it uh, useful to go back to her husband though she had found her lover after such a long drawn out struggle. So therefore while some exceptions to the general norm are there and some movies also have been made but largely speaking the end is mostly in the same old traditional ma manner. Uh, then another very important aspect that one must talk about while uh, discussing uh, women and cinema is the very act of looking as to how are audiences looking at the various scenes and how these various scenes in a movie are directed and designed and acted upon by the actors. So, it is in this context that Laura Mulvey uh, remarked in 1975 that the look or the gaze in cinema is male-centric and that male audiences derive scophilic pleasure looking at women. So, the aspect of sexual satisfaction even when you are looking at a scene that is being uh, depicted uh, is very important and herein lies the appeal of a film. Then uh, another important aspect that has emerged is that caste, community and class determines the character of the gaze. So the gaze is not caste neutral, it is definitely uh, embedded. And uh, both the Dalit as well as non-Dalit women are represented differently in Indian cinema, uh, a theme that would be uh, discussed in due course of time. Then uh, another very important theme that would be discussed is an interrogation as to how women are objectified, valorized or excluded or silenced in the entire cinematic narrative. Uh, starting from when the cinema started till date. Then uh, and uh, also uh, the, the important aspect that emerges out of uh, all these discussions is that how cinematic projections are carried on. So a woman continues to be portrayed as virtuous only if she keeps the structure of family intact and also she continues to respect patriarchy. But the moment there is a divergence to this norm, uh, the entire storyline takes a different route altogether. As a result, a modern woman aspiring to liberate herself from the influences of patriarchy uh, is invariably categorized as a rebel. So, uh, how was this projected in the beginning? Uh, it's a very interesting uh, uh, discussion where you can talk about movies made as early as 1940s. For example, in 1949 in Andaz, Nargis was seeing uh, one such non-stereotypical uh, woman who was shown as uh, nothing less than a vamp and who would be smoking, who would be wearing western clothes, she would be dancing and laughing with men in clubs and ultimately she landed up in jail due to her unorthodox ways. So thereby the whole idea of image construction is a very central to the idea of projecting women the way they are projected in the films. Uh, the image construction also has various implications. So, an ethical universe in which erotic pleasure can be communicated without challenging the modesty of women. Uh, how was this accomplished? This was very easily accomplished through a number of song and dance sequences uh, whereby uh, 
uh, it was uh, the attempt was to valorize uh, to give respect to the virtuous woman whereas humiliate a fallen woman by showing her in particular uh, scenes in particular kind of dance scenes and also by incorporating detailed rape scenes as well as detailed uh, scenes of other forms of violence against women so a woman on the screen became a representative became emblematic of virtue purity and hence the images of sita savitri radha and meera became part of the wider jena and uh, invariably this was achieved by invoking mythology uh, so uh, a repeated reference to mother goddess and shakti and how women was a symbol of that uh, so the film makers could negotiate easily between the sacred as well as the profane and also show the feudal family romance in an interesting and in a more acceptable way now uh, a very uh, good example of these kind of projections can be mother india that was made in 1957 by mehboob khan this was a remake of a film made in 1940 called aurat and the film's protagonist radha uh, which was played by nargis uh, it showed how in order to uphold the morality and to uphold the moder- moral order a mother could kill her own son uh, birju in this movie thereby displaying qualities of mother goddess kali and durga uh, then similar uh, themes were also projected in movies like uh, the hage 1950 then devi 1970 bv hoto ac 1988 and pati parmeshwar 1988 where women invariably played roles of passive dutiful wives and through this passivity and through this obedience and this chastity they were able to achieve the unsurmountable a very common theme uh, uh, right from the beginning Uh, th- uh with which women have been identified regularly is the role of a vamp and by reinventing the vamp filmmakers could redirect the voyeuristic gaze to the female body without being accused of statutory blasphemy by the censors so it was okay if a uh, some kind of nudity uh, was shown as far as a vamp was concerned because this is what a vamp was supposed to do she was supposed to entice and what a better way than wearing skimpy clothes so a vamp if she was shown skimpily dressed was acceptable whereas uh, a, a a woman belonging to a good family uh, a, a household or a married woman uh, could not be depicted in that manner and censors were very particular about this as a result films like r par 1953 shri charsobis 1954 and no do gyara 1957 uh, hovra bridge 1958 can be viewed as examples of this genre where there was a marked distinction between how a vamp was shown uh, versus how the ideal female was shown on the screen uh similarly uh, a very important uh, uh, reference that needs to be made to is to the rape and the male gaze so the camera began to explore the endless possibilities of exploring the anatomy of women's body for example a number of movies were made on this theme of rape and how female auto- uh, uh, anatomy was uh, made public Uh, like insaf ka tarazu 1980 meri awaaz suno 1981 aaj ki awaaz 1984 college girl 1990 phool bane angare 1991 bandit queen 1994 and lajja 2001 now all these movies and a number of other movies uh, of similar genre uh, exploited the details of rape scene and converted into a spectacle and this spectacle could be enjoyed by the audience and these movies became uh, overnight hits because of such explicit scenes then another very important uh, aspect was the interlocking narratives 
of rape and revenge. For example, Zakhmi Aurat 1983, Aurat Ka Intakam 1984 and Pratighat 1987. Uh, also, one cannot miss the observation as to how eroticism has been made part and parcel of cinema and any interesting movie has to have certain level of erotic scenes, particularly uh, uh, Im imbibed in the do song and dance uh, sequences. So, for example, even a normal entertaining films like Dil to Pagal Hai 1998, Tal 1999 and Chandni Bar 2001 had fair doses of eroticism. Uh, also, uh, an incessant theme has been the Tawayaf, the Curtison and the Kota. So, the Tawayaf, Kota and Mujra, these themes have been profoundly explored in films such as Pakiza 1971, Umrao Jan 1981, Sardari Begum 1996 and Devdas 2002. However, contradictory attributes have also emerged out of such depictions. So, while on the one hand there is condemnation, there is also praise. Then there is celebration, but then there is abandonment. And this is how the lives of women living in Kothas were depicted. So, in this overall depiction of the Tawayaf's life, there was the blurring of boundaries between the legitimate and the illegitimate, but at the end of it, such women were abandoned only. For example, as happened in the case of Umrao Jan as well as Pakiza. Now, uh, a very important discussion also uh, revolves around a series of song and dance sequences, which again can be discussed as part of the gendered gaze. The reality of filming the dancing male body and female body is completely different. And extreme close-ups, even if they occur uh, in the case of male dancers, are balanced by full body shots, as you can see from any dance sequence, which suggests completeness and body integrity. But if you compare and contrast this to how a female body is depicted while dancing, you will say that particular focus is directed to two particular body parts, for example, mouth, belly, bottom or breast, thereby indicating how sexuality and sexual projection is far more important and relevant in case of women's bodies. Therefore, while male bodies, even when sexually displayed, they contained signifiers of the social power, the female bodies, even when signified as powerful, they retained sexuality and that was their only identity and usefulness on screen. Then uh, another thing that one can observe in these song and dance sequences is that the entire dance routine conveys that the hero moves the narrative. It is the hero which is the focus and all the women are dancing around the hero or the heroine is also dancing around the hero, thereby signifying that the woman's narrative is seriously confined, limited and they remain in the same old spaces. They remain associated with voyeurism and are given very little narrative agency. Now, coming back to the issue of censorship and how and what role censorship has played over a period of time and even within censorship, one can read the gender narrative uh, it, it is important to highlight how an intense focus on sexuality uh, when it comes to censorship is due to the construction of women as bearers and storehouses of culture, cultural values and tradition. So, the female subject ought to be portrayed in a particular way which does not hit the sensibilities of the larger Indian audience. And a woman ought to be a guarantor and a facilitator of not only historical continuity, but also cultural purity. So, just because this cultural purity has been associated with women, censors have been very vigilant and they have turned no stone unturned 
to stop any kind of vulgarity being depicted in the movies but the idea is not to protect the image of women but in the idea is to further strengthen the stereotypical image that women have carried forward or which has been entrusted and enforced on women since colonialism when women were made the symbols of nation by the nationalist leaders as a result the issue of inappropriate and appropriate femininity uh, became very important and it came to be located in the intersections between nation religion tradition and culture which has resulted in the intolerance towards improper non patriarchal un indian expressions of female sexuality so this has been the common theme that has made censor uh, uh, very vigilant and also skeptical to different kind of portrayals of women on screen as a result any kind of objectionable theme which includes depictions of premarital or extramarital female sexuality or female sexual pleasure or agency or the expressions of female desire same sex and queer desires are considered objectionable also the they uh, these are considered as contradictory to indian culture for example the film fire uh, made by deepa mehta in 1996 faced hostile demands to ban it and the film girlfriend made by karan rajdan in 2004 also faced a flack because it depicted the lives of lesbian women films that depict women traditionally as heterosexual monogamous and passive rarely run into trouble with the censors because that is how the indian society is uh, exists and is accepted now having discussed uh, the various themes uh, that are depicted and uh, the role that has been played by various films in reinforcing stereotypical image of women now the next aspect that would be discussed is the role of women film makers and we would be discussing as to how women film makers have uh, changed the direction of film making and how a new kind of hope has emerged this is not to say that we don't have good male film makers of course films made by uh, directors like uh, sham benegal satyajit ray and so many uh, have um, uh, picked up issues that were uh, women oriented and not male biased and the, these themes have been depicted beautifully but since our topic deals with the issue of women and cinema i would be dealing at length the issue of women and filmmakers and their impact on the visual medium now women filmmakers and women centered films have had a considerable impact on the collective imagination this is a, a, a very important uh, observation because traditionally cinema was associated with men and particularly film production and film direction was a male forte so while women uh, have traditionally been uh, active actors uh, and they have been part of the acting industry uh, since the beginning the direction in a big way has started over a period of last 20 years and there this has been definitely a welcome change so we have the films of aparna sen or kalpana lajmi films like mrityu dand uh, that was made by prakash jha 1997 uh, matri bhumi uh, by manish jha 2003 or door made by nagesh kukunur 2006 or life in a metro anurag basu 2007 these are the films which have attempted to change the general idiom within which women have been addressed in mainstream cinema so even before women directors 
uh, thought of making women centered films the beginnings had already been made by such directors and this was definitely part of a more interesting and gender sensitive cinema but now we would be talking about women directors and how this trend of direction it did not start uh, two or three decades ago but started much earlier and such women directors can be categorized into the category of ice breakers so as early as 1926 we have women director uh, fatma begum she became the first woman director in the indian cinema industry she directed bulbule paristan at a time when women on the indian cinema on the indian subcontinent were even struggling to watch films and the movie bulbule paristan was not a small time movie it was a big budget fantasy film with special effects so this is definitely uh, creditable as to how a woman director managed to direct a film and that to a big budget film at a time when women were not even allowed to go to schools they were not allowed to read or write and there were so many difficulties that they faced so having surmounted all those difficulties here we have example of a liberated woman who was able to surmount all the barriers and she emerged victorious in her efforts then uh, similarly another very important effort was made by thiruvaivaru panchapakesha raj lakshmi uh, tpr uh, she was a woman director whose remarkable life was an example of strong determination and will power and she was also able to realize her potential due to her sheer hard work she was in fact the first tamil and telugu film heroine also she was not only a female director but also a producer in the south indian cinema and she was second in indian cinema after fatma begum to direct a film she further inspired a number of other women directors like p bhanumathi then vijayaniri mala revathi jaya devi and v priya these all were women directors of tamil cinema who did really did a fine job and the the significant achievement was that they broke the glass ceiling they challenged the barriers and they emerged victorious in their journey then uh, another uh, very important achievement was by raj lakshmi who not only produced directed wrote and even she donned the lead role in her films like miss malini which she even edited and another very important movie in 1930s was madurai veeran jaddan bai was another very important uh, female protagonist she was a, a director singer music composer first woman music director and actress and one of the pioneers of indian cinema then k savitri was an indian film actress director as well as producer she appeared in different language films like hindi telugu as well as tamil and kannada with such achievements uh, it was not a small beginning but a huge beginning for women in indian film industry vijaya nirmala was another film maker who directed so many films that she was included in the guinness book of records she directed almost 44 films in telugu and it was in 2002 that she entered the guinness book of records as the female director to direct the highest number of films we will continue in the next lecture from where i am leaving you thanks <laughs>
welcome back. Uh, we were discussing the kind of cinema that was made by, that has been made by, that is being made by the women directors and how it is different from rest of the cinema. So in that context, I was talking about Tanuja Chandra. Uh, she is also known for frequently directing women oriented films where the heroines are the male main protagonists of uh, the films. Uh, apart from them, we have a number of other filmmakers like Vijay Mehta, Revathi, Sadhana Nayar, Suhasini Maniratnam, Tabassum Govil, Aruna Rajay, who have done their part to pave the way for more women filmmakers in India and also for picking up issues which are not only about femininity and sexuality. Now, uh, a very important discussion uh, would be revolving around the innovators as to how it was not only important for women to direct a film, but how to direct a different kind of a film and how to have some experimentation, not only at the level of storyline or theme, but also at the level of direction and production. So it is in this context that now I would be discussing uh, a new genre of women filmmakers uh, who are not only creative but also versatile. So both creativity and versatility that is displayed by this uh, new genre of film directors like Gurinder Chadha. She is a British film director of Sikh Indian origin who made comedy films about Indian women but not without addressing various social and emotional issues, especially those that were faced by the immigrants who were caught between the two worlds. So diaspora became a very important theme uh, that was depicted beautifully by Gurinder Chadha. Then Nandita Das is another innovator known for her directorial debut in a movie Firak that came out in 2008 and it has won a number of national and international awards. Other serious women filmmakers like Meghna Gulzar, Zoya Akhtar, Rajshri, Farha Khan, Bhavna Talwar, Leena Yadav, Rupali Guha, Gauri Shinde, Madhumita, Nisha, etc. are challenging male domination in Indian cinema. Here you can uh, see on this slide some very important women filmmakers about whom I would be discussing in greater detail and the kind of cinema made by them and this would also give you an opportunity to know about their work and then whenever you get time you can always watch their movies and learn a lot about art of not only cinema making but also about society because the films made by these women captured the realities of contemporary society without indulging into commercial uh, cinema uh, or uh, song and dance routines. So first of all, we would be talking about Deepa Mehta, the Indo-Canadian director who explored untouched topics, very different untouched topics and also sometimes controversial topics like homosexuality, partition and in fact she had to face a lot of problems and controversies as the society did not accept these subjects and there was large scale boycott of the kind of cinema that she was talking of. Uh, the trilogy of Deepa Mehta which consists of earth, water and fire, it gave a message to the wider audience and to the global audience that India is changing and she received huge international acclaim for the movie 1947 Earth and as also for the movie Water. These two films were sent to be nominated for the Oscars. Deepa Mehta is definitely an example of not only strong determination but also well developed, balanced, real characters and very good performances as well as tight scripting. So much so that the audience did not miss 
the normal entertainment for which they go to watch movies. Uh, as you can see from this uh, slide, uh, this is a visual and the movie Water uh, poignantly captured the story of child widows and how much suffering they go through and what still continues, how the evil practices still continue and what all needs to be done in order to ward off this evil practice irrespective of political and social dogma. Then another very important woman filmmaker uh, one ought to talk about is Kalpana Lajmi. Uh, she can be described as a feminist director with a unique style of filmmaking who has worked a lot on women issues and made realistic cinema as well as low budget films which are known as parallel cinema in India. So here again, there is not much insistence on adding flavor, salt and pepper, entertainment in order to captivate the audience, but to project real life characters and also an insistence on acting par excellence. Uh, the movie Ek Pal depicted all about a woman's sexual expression outside marriage, whereas the movie Rudali discussed the life of oppressed women in Rajasthan who belong to lower caste. Her next film, Darmian, brought to screen the life of an Indian woman in 1940s who shuns her only hermaphrodite child. And another very interesting film, Daman, 2001, dealt with the issue of domestic rape among middle class women and gave a message of women empowerment. So these films were definitely trendsetters and also these films were being made at a time when the female agency in India was getting stronger and women's issues were being discussed more openly in the public domain. As you can see from this visual, the character played in the movie Rudali definitely had an impact and all of those who have not yet seen the movie must watch it and you would definitely emerge uh, richer in terms of not only experience of movie watching but also understanding gender perspective in a, a movie, how, it, how through a movie gender perspective is beautifully woven and displayed on screen. Then another very important woman filmmaker Aparna Sen uh, contributed in both the commercial as well as regional cinema and the movie Mr. and Mrs. Ayer was quite remarkable and in fact she has been described as the female counterpart of the famous movie uh, Baron Rishikesh Mukherjee. Not to miss the contributions of Sai Paranjpai, uh, who began filmmaking in 1980s and the hallmark of her filmmaking was wit and humor. She in fact moved from writing to theater to writing children's stories, then television and films and then again back to writing. The most well known of her films is Sparsh which went on to win three national awards as well as three filmfare awards and it dealt with the issue of relationships with the visually handicapped. The film revealed not only the emotional side but also the perception, the divide between the world of the blind and the sighted. So this was definitely a break from the past where it was not only a gender issue that was being raised but the issue of humanity and also the issue of how to deal with the handicapped persons in society. By 1981, uh, a very important movie, a very interesting movie that she made was a romantic comedy, Chashme Badur, which was a silver jubilee hit and a remake version of it was again released in 2013. Uh, another very interesting movie which was an instant hit was Katha that was made in 1983. It was about the daily lives of people living in Mumbai Chol. So this again was 
a path breaker movie because here it was important to talk about lives of everyday people mundane lives mundane routines without any reference to the rich the powerful and the successful and still the movie could become popular still it could captivate the audience and this was shown by none other than the film director a woman film director sai paranjpai as you can see from this visual uh, if you get a chance to see you must watch this movie it will highlight the importance of lighter things in life and usual mundane life routine conversation and how lot of pleasure can also be driven out of such instances now uh, another very important and outstanding uh, film director one must talk about is meera nair uh, talking about the thematic concerns of meera nair uh, most of her movies display the influence of globalization how the globalized world operates and what impact it has on society as well as on culture then another recurrent theme of her movies is the indian diaspora indian culture and how those indian who have migrated and settled abroad are torn between the two worlds and how out of this confusion beautiful stories emerge the stories that not only talk about identities but also sensibilities also confusion also human values and also the recurrent theme uh, in her movies has been the aspect of gender equality the issue of equality for women now uh, discussing the movies uh, of meera nair her production company meera bai films specializes in films for international audiences and her first film salam bombay in 1998 it chronicles again the day to day life of children living on the streets of bombay so the movie is not she started her career with a movie which was not about high profile high society life but lives of ordinary people which make mumbai and that to street children another movie in 2004 namesake explored many of the same emotional and cultural themes as jhumpa lahri's pulitzer prize winning short story collection interpreter of melodies which it was largely based on and beautifully depicted then in 2001 the movie monsoon wedding was released which depicts romantic entanglements during a traditional punjabi hindu wedding in delhi but at the same time without referring to the general rot which is there in the society and how children are exploited sexually by the family members so the way this theme was depicted not as the focus of the movie but not even as the passing reference uh can own, could only have been accomplished by the director of her caliber so the recurrent theme that has emerged from the movies of mira nair is the issue of multiple identities the language pluralism as well as cultural difference and how those who migrate and those who belong to diaspora are constantly torn apart between different identities and while they are not able to give up their earlier identity completely their newer identities are also stopping them from remembering the past in totality however nayar's women were strong and talking about diasporic indian women uh, in nayar's films Deepika Bahari commented they no longer content to fulfill dutifully their roles as custodians of tradition though these women might be said to betray a fragile social structure with their diversity of experiences and choices available to them so therefore her films definitely mark a beginning of a new era and how after globalization how after these changes have 
started impacting Indian women also. They refused to go back to the old mold and they start challenging whatever had been considered as acceptable till now. Now, a recurrent theme uh, that has emerged in most of the new kind of cinema, the new kind of uh, movies that were being made was the theme of globalization. So, globalization, uh, a trend that began in 1990s with the opening of Indian economy to foreign investment. This not only had an impact on Indian economy, but also it integrated the Indian markets with the globe, thereby ending the monopoly of the state-owned television channel that was Doordarshan. Now, this was a major change. Uh, a big change was going to come as far as, uh, as far as visual media was concerned. And once the monopoly of Doordarshan ended, there was a plethora of new TV channels like Star Television Network, BBC, CNN, Sony, MGM and Fox, these were uh, new avenues that were emerging and Indian audiences were exposed to foreign television content. With films from Hollywood also invading urban homes, Indian filmmakers felt the vital need to innovate or perish. So now Indian filmmakers also realized the futility of not making new kind of films or making more interesting films in order to survive and also to add the technology, technological push became a reality after 1990s in Indian cinema in a big way. Two distinct trends that emerged after 1990s were, while some filmmakers offered a critique of liberalization and globalization by making films like Page 3 that came in 2005, Fashion 2005 and Heroine 2012. But this again was not done without explicitly displaying female bodies on the screen and exploiting the whole issue of sexuality and visual appeal of female body. And another trend that emerged was the addition of item songs in the films in order to make the films more interesting, more appealing to the audience and also eye-catching in order to increase their global market. As a result, it, it became very important now to titillate the audience and perhaps the first item song in the history of Indian cinema that is Choli Ke Piche was performed in the film Khalnayak that uh, came out in 1995-96 and many films which followed successfully deployed this item song. These include among others movies like China Gate uh, and the famous song was Chamma Chamma that came out in 1998, Fiza uh, Mehboob Mere 2000, then the movie Dam with the song Babuji Zara Dheere and the movie Kal Ho Na Ho the, with the song Mahiwe that came out in 2004 and then the movie Dhoom with the song Dhoom Machale 2004, Banti or Bubbly <coughs> with the famous song Kajarare 2005 and then the movie Guru with the song Maya Maya 2005 and finally Crazy with the song Dekhta Hai Tu Kya that came out in 2008 and a number of films that keep coming. Uh, so, it is now a very important part of the movie. The item song, in fact, becomes the crowd puller and it is not without any reason that these songs are incorporated. Uh, financial viability is a major factor that has forced filmmakers to adopt such strategies. Now, uh, coming back to the issue of women directors and how what role has been played by women directors in changing the validity of cinema? Have they really played an important role or not? This you will be able to decide yourselves when you watch some of the movies that I have referred to 
in course of our discussion. Now, a handful of women directors have made films which have readdressed the issue of voyeuristic gaze in nuanced ways. For example, movies made by Kalpana Lajmi like Rudali, Chingari, Daman, Darmayan, Ekpal and movies made by Meera Nair like The Monsoon Wedding as well as movies made by Deepa Mehta like Fire, Earth, Water about whom we have just discussed as well as movies made by Aparna Sen like Parom, Mr. and Mrs. Iyer. Now, when you watch these movies, you will realize that how uh, the, the gaze, the male gaze, the voyeuristic gaze is absent. But at the same time, the storyline revolves around the issue of women, not the issue of femininity. So, the gender perspective has been woven in the entire storyline in a very balanced way. And also, uh, even though devoid of songs and dance, these movies not only capture the audience, but they continue to inspire them for days to come and also expose them to various questions which largely remain unanswered. And these are the questions and the issues which all the uh, all men and women can largely relate to. And I think this is the beauty of any visual medium. This is the usefulness of cinema. How you can relate your own life and how you can start questioning, how you start questioning the given identities and how you start challenging stereotypical roles that have been assigned to you. And if any movie inspires you to do that, then I think it is not... Uh, it is not, it, it cannot be a, a boring film. It truly can be described as an inspirational and a successful movie. However, this does not mean that all the movies made by all the women directors are truly inspirational or they capture the reality. The fact is that uh, even if a director is a woman, the movie can fall in the category of uh, old kind of regular stereotypical cinema. For example, the patriarchal discourse is clearly articulated through the agency of women. For example, some of the films that were made by women directors like Ekta Kapoor, uh, Ragini MMS 1 and 2, then The Dirty Picture, uh, The Ek Thi Dayan, uh, the, all these were movies made by her. Then the movies made by Regna, uh, Meghna Gulzar like Hu Tu Tu, Just Married and then the movies made by Zoya Akhtar like Kismat Talkies etc. All these movies belong to the traditional kind of movie making experience with hardly any uh, new theme emerging or hardly any discussion on how women's lives must change and the kind of patriarchal linkages that exist and how they need to be challenged. So on the whole, I can say that with this kind of a description of Indian cinema and the role played by women, you will be able to decide for yourself as to what were the changes that appeared in the lives of women because a film is definitely a medium to capture the contemporary society. So, for example, the movies that were made in 1940s, 1950s uh, were capturing a different image of women. So, even if a working woman was shown in the movies that were made in 1940s and 1950s, they were depicted quite differently as compared to the image of a working woman as is depicted in the movies made in 2000 from 2000 onwards. Globalization has definitely impacted our lives in a big way. After 1990s, the change has not only been in the opening up of economy, but also opening up of society, change that has come about in culture, in the understandings about the wider world and how these changes 
have resulted not only in creation of new hopes and aspirations, not only for men but also for women and how this new strategy the filmmakers have adopted to depict the lives of women in new ways is not only has not only resulted in interesting cinema but also it has resulted in creation of new experiences. So therefore, once again we go back to the same quote that I read for you that is representations enter our collective social understandings constituting our sense of ourselves, the positions we take up in the world and the possibilities we see for action in it. So therefore, it is very important as to what is being represented, what you are seeing as an audience. So decide for yourself as to what you want to see because what you see is going to have an impact on your psyche. So decide for yourselves the kind of gender identities you want to carry on, the kind of gender roles you think are important and the kind of women empowerment you would like to see in the society at large because seeing is not only believing but is, it is also acting upon and with lot of uh, new trends emerging post 1990s it is imperative that as a society we become not only more versatile but also more tolerant and more open and we accept the changes with both the arms open while at the same time holding back to what is valuable and important for us. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so very much for giving us a session on women and cinema. And dear friends, do write to us at info.cec at nic.in if you have any queries or if you want to give your feedback for the particular lecture or if you want to have a session on particular topic pertaining to the series Women and History. Of course, we would love to get your feedbacks. Dear friends, we are going to upload this lecture soon on YouTube. We would be meeting again soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you once again.